at the same time, like you don't want to be like, oh no, all my videos this week are doing so bad, right? And then like let that reflect on your self-esteem. So it's just about like having fun with it, enjoying the ride, being consistent. Um, and then like being honest with yourself, right? Making content that you're genuinely interested in. Welcome back to the Corner Talks podcast. I have my good friend here. How's it going, man? Happy to be back. No, it shouldn't be about anything. Like this is yeah. one life. Yep. <laughs> one life? Like fucking yeah. do it. My guy. But he just got it. He totally understood it. 20 years old when I started just watching a lot of movies. How, it, and it tells a story. I want to tell a story. former colleague and content creator, Jeffrey Zhang. What's going on, buddy? How are you? Thanks, Daniel. Good to be here. Really happy. Um, really excited for this. It's probably, I think that's my first podcast. Oh, is it really? I'm so honored yeah. when I hear that uh, from my guests, uh, that I'm the first one to kind of open you guys up to this world, mm -hmm. this medium. Yeah. So um, Jeffrey and I, to give you guys some context, uh, worked for a media production company. Uh, we were close collaborators. And uh, like I had Haas Monzon on the podcast, and he explained uh, why I explained to the audience how much uh, he impacted my life uh, as a content creator, a creative, um, really a storyteller. I would say the same for you, um, and more so on the social media aspect, um, which we'll get delve into more um, how it, you basically used it to cultivate um, and expand your career to what it is today. But um, you have been really inspiring. You have inspired the whole team on how to approach social media from a different angle and how to best utilize the platform. Oh, thank you, Daniel. The, you flattered me. Honestly, that makes me <laughs> <laughs> No, it's the honest truth, man. I, I've uh, seen your growth uh, since we first met. Um, and the thing that's admirable about you uh, is that you're consistent, right? Um, too often I hear that uh, it's not about, uh, you know, the impact, it's about um, the consistency, right? It's about uh, the repetitive nature of what you're putting out there. And you seem to hit that uh, marker every time. Um, so it's something that uh, definitely inspires me. Definitely when I see your content, when I see you posting, uh, always reminds me to keep at it um, and to get to get after it. So um, pleasure to have you on the podcast. Um, as I said, you brought much value and insight as a content creator, not only in the media production company, but to people like myself, um, really understanding the power of creativity. Um, I would like to know from you, though, uh, why did you decide to become a content creator and uh, that's specifically focused on the anime market, I should say. Yeah. So it's, it's a very fun story with that. I started making content in the middle of my master's degree uh, in oh, wow. biomedical engineering. So completely unrelated. It was something that I was doing uh, in my free time. Uh, I think it was right around when quarantine started. So there was just like a lot of time during the day where it wasn't necessarily like boredom, but there was a lack of social interaction. And I was like, well, you know, I usually don't post that much stuff, but like, let's, let's try playing around with the TikTok app and maybe yeah. film, film some short videos and throw them up there. So I did that uh, for a couple of weeks. And before I knew it, I had like a, a small following and I was already in the routine of like making videos every day. But then uh, basically I was doing a lot of different kind of content, but I noticed that my anime content was kind of uh, resonating better with my audience. And then like uh, I was getting more views and more followers and more engagement from that. And so anime is a big hobby of mine. I've been watching it from uh, for as long as I can remember, really. Like uh, even when I was a kid, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Dragon Ball. Yeah. Like that. Um, and I, I love that we have a little bit of that background in common, right? I've seen that. Uh, for sure, yeah. Art. You know, see the the Yu Gi Oh and the Pokemon stuff. It's I'm more of the amateur side. Yeah, like I don't I don't delve into it as much as you. But when you mentioned anime, that's the first thing that came to mind. I have the whole Yu Gi Oh Digimon box sets. Uh, so yeah, definitely familiar with that world. Yeah. Sure. So like it was just it was very natural for me to make content about something that I liked because it was just like my way of sharing my interest with other people. Yeah. No, for sure. And in the spirit of uh, you watch Gary Vee, you you follow him. Mm -hmm. You know who he is, obviously. Um, he actually you're actually an example of what he means by making content uh that you enjoy that you're passionate about but also um kind of narrowing it down laser focused and a niche market do you know what i'm saying like yeah. you don't just make funny videos it's like you got to watch anime to really get it like half of your videos maybe 75 percent <laughs> sorry man i just don't know what the hell hell's happening it's all good it's all i appreciate good. the creativity hey the effort the creativity that goes in it some are just funny because of your charisma and your natural presence on screen but uh, the fact that you make these videos uh, that's tailored for that demographic, 
Um, again, it's, it's, it's following in suit, following in the spirit of what Gary Vee always says is you will make money, you will make um, a lifestyle for yourself. If you pick something you really enjoy, right? He goes buttons, rocks, whatever, in your case, anime, and you yeah. just narrow down all your energy into that field. Um, having said that, have you noticed, uh, well, I'm sure you have, but I like to hear from you uh, as a content creator, your um, kind of career has changed or improved like your life? Yeah, I would say that it has. And the most um, important thing to me from the social media stuff is that I've been able to get some friends in the community who really share my interests. So like growing up, I didn't have like a lot of friends who shared this hobby of mine, like a handful, but we didn't really talk about it much, right? In college, I had a, a few people that maybe we would like Discord call and watch some episodes together. Uh, but it wasn't until I became like a content creator and started getting followers and like meeting these other content creators who do like similar content that we could start talking and be like oh like you you make anime content too like what's your favorite one? Oh my god that's my favorite or like oh that's my second or third favorite and then like you know you start making a group chat you start planning for conventions together and that's probably the most value it's brought for me obviously there is the side of like it is now a viable career choice to kind of like really dig my feet into um and then kind of like take things to the next level right like learn some uh, new editing skills uh look into like higher production value some like uh uh, collaborators and all that. Yeah. Uh, but sure. mostly it's just making these friends. Yeah, no. Uh, and, and I see it right. Evidently on your Instagram. And, uh, part of the reason why I bring it up is because I know, um, what it can get, what it, what you can gain from putting yourself out there. Cause I've experienced that on my side. Like, you know, like you said, you've been part of those social media groups or those, uh, Instagram groups where they organize conventions. I've done that with uh, film groups. Um, it's led to collaborations like pro professional, but it's also led to, friendships right like hey how's it going what's going on how are you um so it's kind of cool to have that community that sense of community and i can only imagine man like the the audience that you've gained um those kinds of relationships and friendships uh would form um so that's really uh really cool and um now that you've you know achieved this point in your career where you know you're you're you have a momentum of increasing your community and expanding your audience why do you continue to motivate uh what, what keeps you motivated, I should say, to keep creating and keep pushing out content at this point? Yeah, I would say that like the growth in itself is very encouraging, right? Like having a community of supporters and like people who interact uh, on the regular is really, really encouraging. And uh, I think that I've been blessed with uh, with my community because they're, they're so kind to me. And uh, like they specifically say like, hey, Jeff, like, don't burn yourself out like i know you post a bunch of videos like all the time and I'm like yeah. oh yeah no like don't worry about it i will post things that i enjoy posting about when i have the energy to do so and i have no problem with taking days off it's just not in my habit like i don't have like the ironclad like i must post every day at 9 a.m no i i post when i want to and that just happens to be about every day that's amazing um, yeah and you post when you feel it like you're you happen to create content every day because that's incidental to your passion, right? Like you feel it every day. Like that's you waking up in the morning. If you have a day, because I've seen some days where you have seen a post from you um, for whatever reason, maybe you're busy or you just don't feel like it. That's yeah. warranted. Right. But um, at the end of the day, like, I, I like that idea, like, cause I'm as creative as I wanted to ask you about that, about burning out. There's always that fear, right? You never know if uh, some days you feel demotivated and you're not sure why um, you kind of have this poor energy uh, flowing through your body. And, um, you know, you kind of say to yourself, will I ever get it back? And then next thing you know, it, it does come back. Right. Um, but I think is the important thing, for, like you said, is you kind of just post whenever you feel like it and it, it is what it is for you. Right. Yeah. And like, I will say that if you're trying to develop a career as a content creator, like, uh, like you said, consistency is super important. Having a plan is important and, uh, moving forward, I will probably be a little bit more intentional with that kind of thing. So that if I don't feel like making a video today i can still post a video that i recorded last saturday you know like that kind of thing um that's what i was gonna say like are you probably do that a lot because i know i do like archiving your so like you'll make content and you won't post it right away you might kind of build it up and then you're kind of ahead of the game does that make sense like do you kind of bank yeah, your so i will do that occasionally okay um and then i i do recommend it as like a technique because like you know people are busy our time is limited yeah. sometimes you only devote like a day or an afternoon even yeah. uh to like making a couple things yeah. um yeah. so it's really good to have things in your back pocket so like when you're busy then you just press that post button and then just sit back um exactly but, yeah but for me, like it is, it is therapeutic, even recreational to like make content. I really enjoy it. So I only see it as work when 
it is directly uh, making me money. As in like, if I do a brand deal, like a collab, I need to take some photos with like a new shirt or something. I need to promote an app or something. Like all the videos that I make myself, they might take effort. You know, I might be doing pushups or handstands or like yeah. running around the house or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. at the end of the day, it's, it's fun. It's the equivalent of like meeting up with your friend to go play basketball. Like, no, no, for sure. I, I think it's what you mean is the pressure, right? Like when you do it for yourself, there's that innate kind of freedom of uh, whatever you want to express, right? But you have to follow certain guidelines when you're doing it for a corporation or maybe a, a collaborator, a brand ambassador. So you kind of feel confined within the limits. And it's interesting you say that. That's always how I saw like film school, for example. Mm-hmm. Not, to, not to like crap on it or anything. People <laughs> often ask me. Um, <laughs> maybe it's because I'm jealous that I <laughs> couldn't even attend film school. But uh, the fact is, is that uh, I always like the idea of being outside of that system, right? Because I feel like you can uh, break the rules, right? You can expand uh, your artistry, uh, the whatever, whatever way you see fit and have more freedom to experiment. Uh, would you kind of relate that to, to what you do as well, Jeffrey? Yes, you touch on a super important point there. And it's like the the enjoyment, right? So you want to balance like, what are your goals with what do you what do you like, right? So your goal might be like, oh, I want to hit this number of followers. I want to get this number of views. I want to make this much money. Um, but you have to ask yourself, like, is this something that I like to do? Would I do this for less money or would I do this for free, right? And Sometimes you're like, oh, that's a that's a sweet check, you know. We were gonna do that. Like that's that's why we work, right? Um, but it's a really nice feeling to make something just because you are truly excited about it. And uh, I would say that my journey in making content has brought me more and more of those opportunities, and like given me like hope that there is um, opportunity in this, right? You grow up like my my parents uh, when I started making content, and they're like, Jeffrey, make sure you don't spend too much time on that. You know, you got to focus on school, yeah, you got to focus on your job, yeah. right? Like you can't just, you can't just expect to get paid like doing this stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, maybe not right now, but like maybe in six months or a year, I can get invited to go see a premiere or a movie or something. And all I yeah. got to do is post about it on Instagram and they'll, they'll book my flight for me. Like how yeah. nice would that be? Right. And all they ask is for a creative like interpretation of like your review, like, you know, and you dress up as the character or you exactly. do something, some sort of funny commentator. Yeah. Yeah. So like these opportunities do arise where it's like you can support yourself by doing things that you are passionate about. And that is uh, something that I did not know could, could be done like a, a yeah. few months ago or a few years ago. So no, and, and that's exactly the, the point there. I love what you said where it's like, uh, it may not be sustainable now, but talk to me in a year, uh, six months to a year or two years, whatever have you. Like, for example, now, the as you know through my production i have i work at the media production company but i also have my own production business 94 productions the gigs that i do now <laughs> 300 500 a uh, thousand it's not as consistent where it's like i can leave my job you know what i mean it's like i'm, I'm making a shit ton of money that you know i i can support myself however uh it's a start a stepping stone of doing what i love and kind of like building and honing in those skills yes. and kind of building your network and exactly to your point right it's like the collabs you get right now um you know, and, you know, the opportunity of sponsorship. Um, I don't know, again, where you are in your career, but they may not be like something where you might say, okay, maybe I don't need to work at a corporate job, but at least you're building your community, you're building your audience. Um, and it's evidence in the numbers, right? Like I've seen you grow um, exponentially since I last spoke to you, right? You're, you're now in the hundred thousands for your Instagram. Uh, I'm not sure about your TikTok, but I know your TikTok's over a million um so it's like it's proven it it can happen and tiktok especially right as you know like the platform uh there's so many uh opportunities to have collaborations and also sponsorships right like that platform is now taking over as the number one social media place to be um you know uh some might argue instagram is still relevant um but in terms of the numbers a lot of content creators are moving their way to tiktok and um that's something i actually want to discuss with you uh, with regards to social media, you know, seeing it as how, in, how it is an imperative and effective tool in growing your community. Um, I wanted to talk to you about how do you provide to the people who consume and support your content? What do you, what would you say onto that subject? Yeah. Um, so I think that platforms behave differently, but the approach uh, fundamentally is pretty much the same, right? You, you're asking yourself, like, what is my audience here? And uh, what what can I offer them that they will actually like? What will they enjoy? What's going to touch them emotionally, right? So like, for me, like, I make comedy videos. That, that's kind of my shtick, right? Yeah. I could I could work on a very dramatic uh, romance movie or something, but like that that's not like my specialty. It's something that I could play around with sometime. Um, but 
basically you identify what makes this platform different from other ones. And then you, you serve people like consistently uh, something that they will enjoy and commit to. So like I specialize in short form, I would like to experiment with long form, but I know that short form content is popular on TikTok, Instagram reels and YouTube shorts. Um, and then as I do more live streaming, which I've uh, really dug into like recently is like Twitch streaming and like uh, I'm going to play around with YouTube live streaming as well. I see I know, yeah. yeah, I know that there will be some overlap where, you know, you stream for three hours and you play a game or you tell some jokes, right? And then you go in and you edit that stuff and then you post a five minute video on YouTube now instead of 30 seconds. Right. Um, and so it's this balance of how much time do you invest in each platform? And then how can you make this stuff that you put into one platform work for you on your other platforms? That's like the uh, process that I'm still experimenting with. I'm still kind of get it, getting a grip on it. I have some uh, peers who do a very good job of this like already where they stream on Twitch, they cut their Twitch stream, they put on YouTube, they blow up on YouTube, people on YouTube follow their Twitch and it's like a very like- Wow, humble. okay, that's amazing. So they create like some sort of ecosystem. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. exactly. So honestly, I have a bit of weakness there. If we're looking at raw numbers, right? TikTok over 1 million, TikTok, uh, Instagram over 100K, YouTube, we're at 7,000, which is a milestone that I'm very proud of, but it yeah. doesn't like line up with the rest. No, right? for sure. They're very disproportionate kind of thing, right? Yeah, but still- <laughs> remarkable right um a lot of people listening to the pod, to the podcast would only wish for those numbers right um, the the tiktok numbers especially is astounding just to know that over a million people think about that like it, it's it's i can't comprehend a million people like i don't think the human mind can comprehend a million people in one place right mm -hmm. um the, the last i think i went to new year's eve uh in new york and they they claim that a thousand a million people were in times square so that's insane. Like that's how many people are following Jeffrey's account. It, 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 it's ridiculous. And it's, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah. like inter internationals and kind of thing, right? And that's like, what I'm saying. It's not just from like a, a city, like one city. It's it's all over the world, right? Different cultures, regions, uh, religions. Everybody's following Jeffrey. Um, <laughs> to anyone who's a fan of really anime, right, or what you put out. Um, yes. And that that should be really uh, um, comforting to know and uh, satisfying. Like I have to say, like you know, obviously. Like, I liked how you said you brought up that subject about there's other creators, you know, doing Twitch and, you know, they created like this ecosystem, this uh, kind of like cycle for themselves. Um, but you should always, uh, we should always feel grateful, right? For the opportunities that are presented to us and like how much I like that you claim that 7,000 7, on YouTube was a milestone for you because it is, you know, the fact that you're over a thousand, like who would ever thought, like, I'm sure when you first started YouTube, you never thought you'd be at a hundred, right? Like I just, exactly, reached, exactly. Right? I just reached over a hundred last month. I think I even celebrated it on Twitter. Like I know people are at like 40 million, but I'm happy with my hundred. Cause it's like, I didn't think I'd ever get to a hundred. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So, no, and there's a, there's a, uh, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, there, no, for sure. Go ahead. There's this trap that some creators fall into and it, it really hurts me. Cause like, I'm so grateful for the support that I get from my community. And, um, like, obviously you want to grow and you want to improve your stuff and get more followers and, and that kind of thing. But people forget that these people following you, it's not a number. Like these are human beings who are following you, right? And so like, I hear people and they're like, oh, I only have this many people. And like, when I stream on, when I live stream, only like 10 people join my live stream. And I was like, imagine 10 people in the room with you listening yeah. to you talk. That's a lot of people. You get 30 people, that's a whole classroom, right? But like, as but as Gary V says, right, like, like you just said, I love that notion of they're human beings, they're not robots, they're not paid to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a human being choosing to spend an hour, three hours, whatever have you, and listen or consume your shit, as he says, <laughs> as bluntly and vulgar yeah. as he says, because it's, it's the reality, like you're putting out your stuff that is important to you, and they're consuming it, because it's important to them. Someone who listens to my podcast, like, even if I have five listeners, because right now I, I think it tells me my, from my statistics, I only have five uh, frequent listeners, visitors. That's a big thing for me. Like, holy shit, five people listen to an hour episode every time I put it out. Like, yeah. they don't have to do that, right? But they choose to, right? They can listen to anyone else. So yeah. I love that you said that, man. Like, it's really important to be grateful and being uh, appreciative of, of uh, all that you've uh, achieved. Yeah. And then like another thing is internally, like focusing on your effort and like, are you satisfied with the quality of things that you put out? Right. Are you proud of like your own work? Would you rewatch the video that you made and like yeah. smile at it? Right. Exactly. And I think that if your answer to that is yes, like then you're a successful content creator.
right? So I'm glad you said that because I don't know if I was like narcissistic or pretentious, but I would watch my stuff over and over again. And I would like <laughs> rave about it and be like, yo, I really am proud of this shot. Or, oh my God, the shot's coming up. <laughs> but again, like you have to, yeah, I can't, I can't answer the question of like, is that a narcissistic behavior? But I can tell you that every successful person who makes videos of themselves is looking at them. Right. For sure. And for sure. Like if it is narcissistic, then that is a that is a requirement for this kind of thing, because, yeah. you know, only by observing your own work can you say, oh, this is good. I should keep that. This is bad. I should fix that. Right. And yeah. it's, it's an iterative process and it may, it helps you get better. Right. And it's just this uh, step by step, you know, put in that daily grind of like getting better and better at what you do, whether it's like something simple, like, oh, you know, I should start putting the camera a little bit higher, right? Yeah, I should, yeah. I should add a light in my room. Like, and you'll notice uh, when you keep putting things out, you know, I do videos, but a lot of people do photos. A lot of people do art, right? Yeah. You'll notice you look back six months when you've been posting every day and you look back six months and you see how much better your stuff is now six months or one year ago. It's something to be proud of. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and it's not at all narcissistic to be like, oh, like, I've made progress. Like this no, is great. Yeah. And, that, and that's the thing, right? It's like, I was being facetious about it, but the reality is, is like a lot of the times I look at it, it's not because I'm revering my work. Um, it's because I'm being critical and uh, I want to know where I could have improved or like what, because the more times you watch it, the magic I always say with like film or videos that like, gets pulled out. So you start to see like what it really is like bare bones. Um, and then you use that to apply for next time, right? Like you'll say, okay, when I do this shot, I'll make sure the light's not in the way or I'll get better at blocking. I'm speaking of course, from my, uh, being a director, filmmaker, yeah. not a content creator, because no, 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 but that, that's important stuff. Yeah. Right? I'm still yeah. learning like light lighting stuff, right? Yeah, so. no, for sure. Yeah, and you're doing and you're doing great at it, man. Like I said, I uh, I really am truly again. I'm a, I'm a different sort of uh, content creator. I, I more into like filmmaking and uh, directing and writing, editing things like that. But it's still uh, creativity, right? Um, and it's still storytelling. So when I look at your work um it's a different form right uh it's a different uh art form altogether when you incorporate um these different style edits and like you know there's sound effects and it's very immersive and the fact that you could pull it off in a minute um again is very admirable like it's something i i, I truly mean that jeffrey that i um am astonished by a lot of filmmakers um they strive for that to effectively tell a story in a minute you know i've created a film called beautiful it's a the soccer film it got a lot of that Thank I you. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Thank, oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, that got a lot of festival attention. Uh, it was actually my first, I would say, film that really got noticed in the industry. But I only told that story in a minute, right? And that's what you would consider like a reel, let's say. And again, I think the most effective stories or you, I get, uh, the most effective storytellers uh, like yourself are the ones that can pull that off in a minute. Would you agree? I think that's an interesting statement. So I would say that regardless of the time, yeah. if you have people paying attention and like being engaged with your story, then it's good storytelling. And it doesn't matter if it's uh, 10 seconds, it doesn't matter if it's three hours, right? If no, you can sure. pull somebody in and like make sure that they are like engaged the whole time, right? Have you ever gone to a movie that's like two or three <clears throat> hours long and it passes by like that? Well, hundred percent Tarantino yeah, so, movies. <laughs> yeah. and, and then like, have you ever seen a movie that was like maybe 90 minutes or two hours and you're like, Oh my God, when is this going to end? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's like that, that magic of like grabbing people and like having them commit to what, what you're giving them. Exactly. Um, that is far more than the time. So I want to improve upon my skill for like the longer form, because I struggle thinking like, you know, a 10 to 15 second video is a one-liner joke, right? You, you, you yeah, set up yeah. punchline, you're done, right? No, no commitment needed, right? You know, no like complex world building, but could I apply that same formula or could I learn a new formula to get something that's, you know, three minutes, five minutes long. It's something that I want to play with. And it's not something that I'm like committing myself to, like, this is the way I'm going to do things from now on always, right. but it's something I want to experiment with. So yeah, storytelling, I think is less about how long the story is and more about like how interesting it is to people. Yeah, no, for sure. That was well said. And, and that's something that uh, a lot of filmmakers, content creators would agree upon. I, I just, for me, I was fascinated that people can even achieve a, a story. Because again, my, my line of work, what I want to do, my passion, um, it's 90 minutes, to two hours, right? For a feature, but if short, it's usually about five, 10 minutes, maybe even 20. So like, there's that room to tell a story, but there are filmmakers that I've seen like short films, they're called micro films. They've, yeah. they've done them in a minute. And back to your point, the fact that like they pull you in and they're able to tell a convincing, complex story in just a minute um, is just as admirable if someone has 
three hours to tell it. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. um, it's really just all about creativity and imagination. And, and I love what you said, right? It's, it doesn't matter the length of the time. What matters is um, what, what's being produced. You know, what, what do you get out of watching it? Um, and that's so important. And I love the idea that you want to expand and you want to delve into more complex uh, storytelling because that's something that I would definitely advocate for you because I think you can pull it off. And um, one thing, again, I'm not for, for just pressing my ideas on to anyone, but even educating your audience on anime or like just directly telling them like what it means to you would probably really open up to people like myself that have no idea yeah. <laughs> that, that much of that world of anime and maybe could uh, introduce a, a different uh, kind of demographic, right? Sure. Like I love blabbing on and on about like, my, my favorite shows and be like, yeah. no, like you don't understand the depth of this foreshadowing. Cause in like 57 episodes, it turns out that like, you know, right. Um, without spoiling. Um, yeah. But yeah. When we think about the short film versus long film, like I like to use like up as an example, I think yeah. up is a fantastic movie, but even if the movie was just that little flashback with no, dialogue, right. Everybody. Like, yeah. That would have like been unanimous. I think that's a unanimous agreement for sure. Exactly. Right. And then like those, all those like Pixar shorts that are like, you know, between one minute and like five minutes. 100%. Long, those are all like really fun to watch. They pull you in. Um, and so I think like that's, that's the beauty. That's the storytelling where you just have to, draw people in and make it really compelling like maybe it's relatable maybe it's just something to think about uh but yeah it's all visuals right at the end of the day right and that's that's what kind of pulls us in um you know like you were mentioning about the up and the short films um that's all what it comes down to but uh i love that notion i love we're on the same page uh with regards to you know uh the power of storytelling and how to be most effective as a content creator um now i wanted to ask you uh establishing you know, your experience, your expertise in this field, what advice would you give to those newcomers uh, to social media uh, or someone looking to significantly uh, grow their audience? So to newcomers, my, my biggest advice is to be consistent and have fun with it. Don't pressure yourself too much, right? Like, like these kind of things, I feel like start as like a hobby. They become a passion when you get good at stuff. Um, so it's like, don't, don't be too hard on yourself and just like, uh, some people, especially like the new people will focus too hard on the numbers, right? Like I just, I have such a big uh, network of content creators and I, I see stuff and I was like, yo guys, like you, like numbers and metrics are important, right? You want to say like, hey, this video I made did really well and this video did not so well. What did I do in this video that like that, that really struck a chord with people? But yeah. at the same time, like you don't want to be like, oh no, all my videos this week are doing so bad, right? And then like, <laughs> let that reflect on your self-esteem. So it's just about like having fun with it, enjoying the ride, being consistent. Um, and then like being honest with yourself, right? Making content that you're genuinely interested in because, you know, Daniel, like when it comes to getting followers, I tell my friends all the time, like if yeah. you just want maybe not like a million, but like a hundred thousand on like TikTok, super easy. Go to Reddit, steal somebody else's joke, green screen it, read it out loud, add a like a, add a like swirly voice filter to it. And really that's amazing <laughs> what a hack you do that 500 times you will get a hundred thousand followers i've seen those videos on tiktok where it's like use this sound and you'll go viral and like the i, I don't know if like how how yeah how tr truthful that is but i've seen uh not maybe viral but their likes is like insane like they got fifty thousand likes and it's just a guy just sipping a cup of coffee exactly and he's like you see what i mean and i'm like whoa that's scary <laughs> Yeah. Part of those are like a self-fulfilling pro uh, prophecy, right? Yeah. Because, like, you sure. know, we can, we can analyze this. The way that it works is exactly. um, it's a numbers game. There's confirmation bias. If a hundred people do this and one person goes viral, you're only going to see the viral one. You don't exactly. see Exactly. And you're going to think to yourself, viral. I did something wrong. Or like, yeah. yeah. And gotcha. then the other thing is when you, when you make a claim like that, it's like, oh, you'll definitely go viral. You get yeah. comments of people saying, I tried this and it didn't work. And every comment is a little bump in your algorithm. And then again, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. See, Jeffrey's one step ahead on this. That's why I love, love uh, asking you these questions now, because you make me see the bigger picture. Yeah, but like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, right, is effort is important and being genuine is important. But if we're just talking like how to get views, you know, you could just steal things from Reddit, steal things from Twitter, right? You just slap that thing on the screen and then just like point at it and eventually you'll get a lot of views. But I don't think that that's like the, the right way to go about it, um, you know. And I've seen content creators what's funny like they have the following they have the creativity the talent but once in a while they'll do videos like that sure, like once in a while it's fine you know yeah yeah but it's just like uh i, I see some stuff and i'm like wow like 
this could have been a this could have just been a picture right but but you you chose to take the picture and like point at it um this could have definitely put in more (laughs) they could have put in more effort than this (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. for sure well that's really interesting i i i love what you said about treating it like a hobby until it becomes a passion and not getting caught up in the numbers um that's something that a lot of us including myself i admit it i'm guilty of sometimes yeah Um, and i I do sometimes yeah definitely yeah Yeah, no you post you post something right and and uh, that's why I go back to Gary V's, uh, you know, guidance. Uh, and he says, people get caught up in the numbers so much where they'll post something one day, it goes viral, or it does really well, you know, great feedback engagement. And then you post something the next day and it does shit. And it's like, why would you be discouraged from one post? You don't know what everyone else is doing. You don't know if it resonates with them. Who cares? Did you enjoy that post? Are you putting it out there for yourself or for everyone else? So it's kind of like, just keep, like you said, every day just post it just do whatever you feel right do whatever is enjoyable to you and your audience will follow um if they enjoy it right just as much as you do so i I really like that that idea now i see from your content and i i always have a laugh with you about it um because you handle the negativity in your community very well um you're creative about it (laughs) you make videos about it uh and you and no i'm serious man like you (laughs) you target these individuals and you'll make skits about it too and you'll incorporate anime characters like i really i really enjoy your innovation um ingenuity in it uh but i know now have to know from you how have you handled negativity from people on social media and what advice would you give to those that do struggle with it yeah this this is good you know i I wrote down this this oh okay perfect great yeah 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 So first of all, I want to preface this by saying compared to other people, like with my numbers, I don't get that much negativity. I know creators who get 10 times, a hundred times the hate that I do. Wow. And so like proportionate to their audience size or like they just, yeah, 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 just, just like, and for no reason, because like people on the internet can just be mean sometimes. Of course. Yeah. So like, if you're getting like a lot of hate, the best thing to do is just don't look at it. Like, honestly, I have a friend who's like very, very successful. I'm not going to name drop them. Right. But they get hundreds of hate comments on every youtube video they also get like a positive comments but like they're they're so successful that there's a a mix of both right yeah of course they don't check their youtube comments they just post the next video and like just move on that's amazing yeah yeah. and then one thing that i do that i am proud of like you mentioned is like taking a negative comment and making a skit out of it um or like just just having fun with it and like you don't obviously you don't want to just like come for somebody's life or their family right but like somebody (laughs) says something a little bit mean and then you're like, what can I, what can I do with this? Right. There, there's, yeah. there's something useful to be taken away from this. And there's a difference between like a valid criticism versus a hate comment and like hate comments, they don't feel good. Right. Yeah. But valid criticism is something super valuable. Right. Where right. it's like, Oh, you, this would have been better if you like, maybe you're, you're portraying like a really tall character or something. It's like, this would have looked better if the camera was on the ground. And I'm like, thank you. Like that is super useful information. I will do that next time. Right. Like, that's what I mean. Sometimes it's genuinely constructive criticism. Like they just want to give their opinion and you take it as you will. Right. Yeah. So like, that's, that's kind of my guiding light here is two things. Number one <clears> is <throat> can I make this thing that I'm seeing helpful to me in some way? If the answer is yes, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. If the answer is no, then we ask myself the, yeah. the next one. It's a little more petty. It's like, does this person's opinion matter? And usually the answer is no, right? Like it's not my mom, my dad, my friend, my sister. It's not my coworker, right? It's just some kid on the internet saying like, oh, cringe, right? It's like, yeah, yeah exactly. Just, just you don't on. even know if they're having a bad day where they are in their life, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, uh, that was that was a great piece of advice, um, you know, uh, because and, and it's very interesting that you say that because there are a lot of content creators proportionate to their audience size, the bigger you get, you're naturally going to have that subset of people uh, that just attack you for whatever reason. And you can't let that get caught up in your head. Right. So um, I, I again, the reason why I brought up that specifically, though, is I really enjoy uh, when you do make those videos and you point them out, uh, not because it's good, good to laugh at anyone, but it's good to laugh about it right it's good to like kind of treat it life lightheartedly um but it's not you like attacking them saying like don't ever post on this again it's like you being funny with it right uh, yeah sometimes you create a new persona a character for it um and you laugh with it too you kind of like see the stupidity of, of being negative for no reason <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean? yeah like like because sometimes yeah. you can you can be negative for a reason right and it's like yeah. yo this post is kind of this post is kind of problematic. You shouldn't post that. Or it's like, wow, you're kind of a jerk for like making this joke. Right? For sure, like, yeah. Those, those exist. Yeah. Um, I don't get them very much because I try really hard not to be a jerk in my videos. <clears throat> right. But when I do, like, I'm thinking of one, I don't know if you've seen it, but like, uh, 
someone was like, 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 you know, like your videos suck or something. Right. And I responded yeah, yeah. to it and I was like, all, like almighty push, which is an anime reference. And yeah, I was like, yeah. 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 And I hit the block button. Uh, but like, you know, it was just, it was just fun to make that video and it was a little bit different. And I played around with different editing effects. You know, I shook this screen and I like made flashing lights and whatnot. Right. And it was just like interesting to play around with. So looking for opportunity in, in all that stuff. I tell my friends, like my, my people in my discord server, I'm like, I wish I had more hate comments. Because wow. some, sometimes they're funny. Sometimes, sometimes they, no, they, sometimes they are. They're genuinely funny. Like, yeah. Yeah. And you can, you can make something out of it. Yeah. So. On, honestly, man, like I've, uh, I've only experienced it. Uh, and it hit me hard really because I've, I've not, I haven't experienced it before, but I've been uh, kind of overcoming it uh, with the YouTube shorts. Like I'll just get one random negative comment. Like I could draw better than you and I'm 13. Like, <laughs> I'm just, at first I didn't know like how to handle it. And I'm just yeah. like, yo, it, it's like, where did this come from? Like I you, you yeah, have to yeah, just yeah, laugh yeah. it off. You know what I mean? Like it was just right. so uncalled for, but uh, you know what? Hey, that's how they genuinely feel. Like that's their truth. Right. So yes. you, you can't argue that. Right. And you just gotta, right? like that, that kind of hurts a little bit. Right. When you put effort into something and then like somebody is like, you know, like crapping on it. Um, but here's the thing maybe not that person, but it's yeah. accepting this. It's like, like I can draw better than you and I'm 13. I was like, that's great. There's nine-year-olds who can draw better than me. They're, they're like, it's, it's fine. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know why my art offended you so much that you felt the need to, to say Yeah, that. like, that's what I mean is that like, again, maybe because of how I was raised or just a good person, whatever. But even I mean, if I do find something- we're, we're Canadian. We're, exactly, we're yeah, yeah, let's be honest. I, I, I should mention Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey's in the States right now in the US, but he, he is Canadian at heart. I just don't feel the need to go out of my way. Like I'll say it in my head. Don't get me wrong. I talk shit all the time. Yeah. But I'll, I won't post it on Instagram and like say this is shit. Like it's just I don't know. I, I it's beneath me. But whatever have you, right? Like everyone's different. And uh, like you said, you get you, you don't know what it is. You just gotta accept it and move on. Um, but I really like how um, you know you embrace the negativity and uh, you use it uh, to kind of serve you even better. So that's really adm admirable, man. Um, so recently and quite frequently, I seen you post, uh, you know, you've been to several anime conventions quite, uh, like I just said, recently, uh, you were attending, uh, why are these events important to your brand and your content? So it's interesting because, uh, for, I've only been to two, um, oh, okay. Me Me <laughs> yeah, mega Con just a lot of content then. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like yeah. I go to these and like, yeah, know, honestly, yeah, I'll post some video that other people shoot and uh, tag them in it. Right. So it's that's not right. That's right. Everything. Um, but they're obviously they're important to my brand because like, you know, it's a space where everybody's enjoying <clears throat> stuff. Sometimes at these conventions, like I will get recognized or I will meet up with people that I haven't met up before, but like we know each other on the internet. So it's really great to get that like real life personal connection with people. But even if I were not filming, like, even if you took my phone away and you're like, Jeff, you're just going to this convention, like I would still go because they're a ton of fun. Like, yeah. like, I really like that. And I have been working on a calendar for myself for the rest of the year. The reason, so this is my second, because when I was younger, it was either like time constraints or like money constraints or like, you know, it's just, oh, this is too far. I can't take time off of school or work to go to this thing. But now it's like more viable to, to like make this commitment because I know it's going to benefit me, right? Like, like going to these, like as uh the people that I'm going to meet, the experiences I'm going to have, the things that I can learn are like very valuable. Whereas a few years ago, it's like, Jeff, you're in the middle of your degree. Like, what are you, what are you doing? You can't, you can't take like four days off and just go. It is go. pretty, I was going to say it is pretty risky, especially because I didn't know it was a, a postgraduate. It was a, a master's degree. I, I thought it was just you in university, like fooling around, whatever, but this, that's, that's a, a big step, big move for you. Mm hmm yeah. And like my first job, my first full-time job was like, you know, biomedical related. I worked right, in a right. software company and it was a little tiring. I'm not going to lie. Right. So of course, like, yeah. it was go to work, come back home, eat dinner, make a video, post the video, go to sleep. Like, like you know, like, um, <laughs> yeah. and then no zest. <laughs> yeah. No, no zest. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going to these conventions was super fun. I'm planning to go on at least six for the rest nice. of the year. Amazing, man. Yeah. So do you get, um, like, is it, you have to pay your own way or like, do you get sponsored? Like, how does that work? Well, that's the thing is right now I have to okay. pay my own way. Okay. Not everybody has to pay their own way. And at a certain point you start getting invited and you start getting, yeah, yeah. Like they want you there to like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you gotta, like, you gotta break that ceiling and like, uh, speaking super frankly, right. Like I'm pretty close. Like I, 
if I just talk to a couple people, the organizers send in some applications, there are places that I can go at the very least I can get, definitely get like a free ticket. Right. Okay. Maybe not my flight, maybe not my hotel. Right. But like, right, if I, right. like a real voice actor or something, then, then your stuff's booked, then you're all set. They'll, they'll talk to you a year in advance and they'll be like, Oh, Jeff, we need you at this place. I'm not there yet. That's the goal. Um, but yeah, that's amazing, man. Well, you're, you're working towards it. That's the important thing, right? You're not just talking about it because <laughs> so many people I know, uh, wish they were actors, wish they were content creators, um, and admire what we do. But the, the, what kind of always brings me relief every day is to reminding myself is that you, you, at least you're doing it. You're putting yourself out there exactly. like this podcast, like you'd be surprised, but there's so many people, so many friends I remember. And I was one of them too. Like, Oh, I always wanted to make a podcast. I always wanted. And I remember the pandemic came around. I was so bored. So restricted creatively. And I said, you know what? We can, I can, I, I'm sure we can do it for free. Like I don't need a studio. I don't need the fancy Joe Rogan microphones. I can do it. You know what I mean? And zoom, right. Uh, became free, uh, you know, uh, for, for two people on a call. And I did my research, you know, uh, I used the platform anchor to uh, distribute the, the episodes. And I realized, wow, it doesn't cost me anything. I caught, I'm not kidding you, Jeffrey, when I say this, I only spent 80 bucks on this podcast. <laughs> you know, obviously it shows like, you know, the production value is not crazy, but the no, fact no, that- no, if you had me guess, I would have guessed more than that, right? Like certainly, yeah. No, man, like honestly, okay. So I recently paid for like a $200 subscription to Zoom because now they're charging. Um, the pandemic's over kind of thing, but it used to be free. Yeah. Um, so I paid a yearly subscription for that. But my point being is that it really didn't cost me much. Like obviously there's editing services that I provide and whatever, but I, I, that, that I have to um, pay for it. But the, the point being is that it was significantly less, a fraction less than what I thought it would really cost me uh, to do a podcast, you know, and I've seen people like, you know, trying to do it in person and they're very successful at it or effective and whatever have you, but you have to also make what works for you, right? Like my guess, like yourself in Michigan, I, I can't organize you to come to my house, fly you here. Like I'm not at that level, you know what I mean? And I also have, I'm very, I get very impatient because I'm creative. So I want to do other things. I don't want to just do one thing. So what I'm trying to get at is a lot of people were telling me, yo, just create a little studio space in your study area, like where I'm in right now and like invite guests over in person. It's like, why? So I can have five guests a year. I want like a guest or two every week. You know what I mean? Like I want like constant, constant. And what I've learned in business and uh, you know, sales and even uh, entrepreneurship with running my business is the, the more times you make it less, uh, challenging, uh, for, whoever, for, for whoever it is you're serving, like the guests or the client or the customer, uh, the more successful you'll be with them. Right. <laughs> so all I did was send you a link, send you the questions, click the link, make sure you're in a quiet space. You're good to go. Right. But if I start saying you need this microphone, you need to be in this location, you need this time. Ah, yeah, I can't make it. <laughs> right. right. So yeah. I think it's important, by the way, like, you know, yeah. that, that is super important uh, for, for people watching, right? If you want something to happen with other people, you have to make it very simple and straightforward for the other person to do it. Right. So for example, if you said, yo, Jeff, let's go on a podcast sometime. I'm like, when? And you're like, I don't know, sometime. Yeah, exactly. Like, like you know, we're, we're friends. So I'll do it. But like, that's yeah, going to sure. me off a little bit. Right. And then the fact that you had the questions like prepared and like it gave me some time to review and didn't say, yo, Jeff, we're doing this like, right now. We're doing this tomorrow. Right. And, and I'm like, I can actually go look at these. So I know that we're going to have a, like a good productive conversation. Exactly. Um, it just and makes that's the whole point. Yeah. It makes the other person feel really at ease. It's like, oh, this person knows their stuff. We're doing it at this day. We're going to meet at this time. We're going to talk about this and that. Right. And then like, we, we know what we're stepping into and it's convenient and it's secure. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and being punctual, thorough and organized. Those are values that I really put on a pedestal like it, it's important to have not everyone has them let's be honest there's different characters yeah um you know family friends uh don't really <laughs> share the same you know, eye to eye right people are late people are this that but those are things in my opinion um and as proven in the world uh that make you successful right like this podcast wouldn't run smoothly if i was that character right like oh sorry i'm running an hour late can we reschedule or uh i didn't get to the like i didn't provide you with questions and i'm just like so like what's your favorite color exactly. you know like there's no guy there's no direction to the conversation like it's important to have some sort of structure some sort of over overview i like to keep it organic as possible like the questions really were just for myself uh, to give myself structure to the conversation and also for yourself to be prepared but uh I like to be, you know, uh, free ball it, right? Like, Hey, like, what, wh what do you think about this subject and that subject? But I really, in, uh, appreciate you, uh, kind of noticing those things is, uh, I really do take, take my time with it. Right. And, and I always like to plan in advance and always like to, uh, make the guests feel as comfortable as they can be. Um, because I want them to enjoy themselves and like spread the word, you know, maybe even come back and, uh, share their story more. So.
Thanks, but thanks for that, man. Absolutely. And um, so I want to know now, uh, speaking about your journey and all the successes you've had and uh, the failures you learned from, what is the end goal uh, as you continue to embark on this journey um, mm -hmm. as a content creator for your avid fans of anime? <laughs> yeah, there, there are a couple options at this point. And okay. like I've devoted like a couple of days to just strategizing and laying things out. And what I want to do right now is just make some moves that will support me whatever direction I decide to take it, right? So like keeping in mind that I have a technical background, right? And I was like, some people ask me all the time, it's like, are you ever going to like use that degree for anything? And I was yeah. like, well, I mean, I could. Um, and I don't think that this is stopping me, right? Is right. you can get expertise in some like a biomedical field and then you can work on your project. And that's great. I respect that. That's what my dad does, right? But if I work on my social media stuff and I still have my friends from college and I still retain some of my knowledge and my experience, and then we decide one day we're going to like launch a business and that I know about marketing now. I know about yeah. collecting an audience now. I can sell my app or my product to like my, my, my followers and my viewers. And it'll be organic because like it's me about another passion project of mine, yeah. like with my friends. Very so that is one option. Another option is to really go into like the YouTube, the Twitch streaming, you know, like all, all that, like just to be like a YouTuber or like that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and then finally is taking that option and being a little bit more like professional about it and like try acting, voice acting, like try to get in a movie. Right. Cause as a kid, I did, I did want to like uh, be in a movie. That was kind of the thing. I was like, oh, yeah, no. yeah. I remember you telling me that, like when I told you I was a director, you're like, Hey, I'd love to be in your movie. And I'm not kidding. Like I, We'll find a way to get you uh, in there somehow. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I mean, like, look, if we ever, like, you're in Toronto right now. Yeah. Uh, that, that is right, right? Yeah, I am. I'm in Toronto. Yep. I might book my flight to Toronto a day earlier or stay a day longer because there is a Let's convention. Let's go. Toronto, yeah. July 15th through There 17th. is a convention, yeah, coming up. They, that's right. I forgot about it. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah, if you want to, if, if it's the same, like, amount of days, like, maybe we can grab dinner or something. We I'd, should I'd spend the day. Hey, man, I, I don't know what kind of style your content is, but I would love to like if you wanted to do like a vlog or just like hang out if you want me to help out or we can grab dinner for sure and catch oh, up. Something. Yeah, to... We should meet up because like it's not every day I go to Toronto anyway. It's right? not. And, and the fact that you're in the city, you definitely got to say hi. I'll be offended. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, but that's great, man. Uh, we definitely do have a convention. Um, fuck, I would love to actually go to the convention. Uh, are tickets like on sale? They are on sale. We can talk about it offline. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. I'm happy to tell you about it. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's mid July. So. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Well, definitely. Uh, let's talk about that. Um, but yeah, man, that, that's really exciting. I'm, I'm super looking forward to you uh, coming to Toronto and meeting you in person, believe it or not, guys. Uh, as I always remind my guests, a lot of people here on this podcast, I've never met in person and that's the power of social media, as you know, the theme of this podcast, <laughs> um, but it's really, uh, really, really a crazy tool. And I just can't believe how much I've been utilizing it. Uh, confession. I've never really liked social media. Uh, sometimes I, I'll, I'll be honest. I really don't, um, enjoy it as much maybe as other people, but I do, uh, I'm aware of its power. I'm aware of its influence and, uh, how effective it can be. Um, and how far it's gotten me in my career. So that's why I continue to utilize it um, because I love connecting with yourself, Jeffrey, and everyone that listens to this podcast and potential viewers. So, yeah, let uh, me put you at yeah. ease, right? Because like yeah. what you're saying about not liking social media, I feel yeah. the same way, right? Where yeah. it's, it's like, sometimes it's just like icky. It's not a good vibe. You go on there, like a bunch of people are saying negative stuff, right? It's just like, uh, like there's this weird energy. Like I, one of my biggest mistakes in my social media career is my Instagram account is my personal account. I do not have a Jeffrey Zhang and then a Jeffrey Zhang professional anime. Right, right. Because I never thought I would get more followers. So I literally just started putting myself on it. And was like, Oh no, like this is <laughs> it's blowing up. Yeah. 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 But no, honestly, man, like the reason why with social media, I tell people all the time is not to be, you know, uh, kind of cynical, but all you see is highlights. And I just know, cause I'm an empathetic person and I write, I know that's not how like human beings are complex and my brain's telling me like, it's just positive and that's great. But I just, I, I prefer meeting the person in person, like getting to know you, like the, the conversation, once God willing, you come to Toronto and we, we meet up, will be completely different dynamic than us talking on zoom or like, you know, just meeting each other through, through uh, social media. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you just, you, you have more of an appreciation for the, the, the friendship and like the individual and you kind of like understand them um, and you can open up to them a lot more. So like, I don't know. That's just always been my vibe. Um, 
social media I got strictly for, for purposes of being creative and for my business. But there are times when I get caught on it and I say like, this isn't real life. Like I want to go outside. I want to breathe the fresh air. I want to talk to people. I want to, you know, go to, uh, go for coffee, grab a drink. Um, so yeah, you, you have to have a, a, a happy balance, like with anything in life and just be treated in moderation and not let it consume you. <laughs> it gets you. That's all yeah. I got to say about that. Yeah. Like, and as a, as a creator, right. Like obviously it benefits me when people consume my content, but like, I think most people consume too much social media and yeah, they, for sure. Yeah. Like you, you go on there and you just like, Oh, this person is so, you know, this person's so rich and famous and good looking and the, like their life is so easy. They're vacationing here. And, and like, you just, it, it makes you feel bad about yourself if you think about it too much. And well, your brain, your brain plays tricks on you as we know from our, our, from the job, right? Like the company we employed us, uh, that was like one of the strongest messages is your, your, your emotions are, are fake. Like, <laughs> They're, 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 they're just like brewing in your head, but they're not real. Like they're temporary. And I, yeah. I never really understood that. I'm like, what the hell? Like if I'm sad, I'm sad, but I realize it's like, it's just a, a, a feeling. And if you keep feeding it, it's going to go out of control. But if you ignore it, it's just chemistry in action, right? It's just chemistry in action. Right. So it's like, um, yeah, you got to just look at it that way. Like the, the brain tells itself stories, like seeing a picture on a sunny day of someone on a sunny day, you have no idea you know, what's going on in that photo, what happened after or before, you know what I mean? You just see a snapshot, but the brain likes to imagine they're having a good time. They're living life. They're doing great things. After that picture, they went uh, for a nice walk and they made millions of dollars. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? Yeah. No, exactly. You're right about that. <laughs> and of course, as content creators, <laughs> right. It's a catch 22. We're like, we're, we're, our imagination is even more uh, complex. So we're just like thinking all kinds of things and getting carried away with it. So it really changed my, like the way I think about things, like in a, in a stupid way. So like if yeah. anybody's watching who doesn't make content, like this might not make any sense to you. Like yeah. I'll be seeing that. I'm like, there were four people involved in this photo. Like, right. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be like, okay, like there's a subject, but like, there's definitely like some dude holding a light and another dude holding a reflector <laughs> for the light, like in this, in this photo. And you see and, those memes. Yeah. Yeah. You see yeah. those memes, especially like the girls taking photos and there's like a guy like, like uncomfortably like taking the shot lying down and there's like a mirror and whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly. Curated, yeah. Curated content. Um, wow. There was one point you mentioned earlier that I do want to touch upon and yeah, there's like, for sure. about like, like people starting out. Right. Yeah. My, my biggest piece of advice is don't think that you cannot do something because of the stuff that you do or do not have, right? Yeah. A lot of people fall in this route. It's like, oh, I want to make YouTube videos, but I don't have a nice camera. Yeah. Like, I don't have the best microphone. That's I don't right. have a, literally, like, your phone is good enough for many things. And, like, editing software, Shoots, like, right? 4K now, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in 4K yeah. now, right? Just use the back cam rather than the front cam if you want to do that. Exactly. Um, but, like... TikTok is a free app that has a lot of editing capabilities. There's plenty of free apps out there. Video Leap, CapCut, Splice, you know, th this stuff is free, zero dollars, right? And you can do so much more than you think, as long as you give it a try, right? Yeah. So, yeah. That, that's, that's amazing, like man. No, th that that's well said. And, and you got to just honestly, like, uh, keep putting it out and not let it consume you, not get into your head and uh, realize that there's other resources, uh, affordable resources uh, that can get you to where you want to be right? Yeah. Uh, a point in your career. So I really appreciate you, Jeffrey, yeah, sharing your insight, sharing your journey. I've been meaning to talk to you on this podcast for a while. I know we talked offline and I know a lot about you, but I wanted you to share your, your, um, again, your experience with, with the audience. Um, just, uh, what it's been for you, uh, as a content creator, uh, seeing that growth and, uh, really the opportunities and, and the endeavors you uh, wish to pursue in the future. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I had a great time. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. I really appreciate it. Thank you again, everybody, uh, for listening to the podcast. And we'll talk soon.